Welcome to American Accent Training. This book and CD set is designed to get you started on your American accent. We'll follow the book and go through the 13 lessons and all the exercises step by step. Everything is explained and a complete answer key may be found in the back of the text. Exercise 6-7, Finding the R Sound. Pause the CD and go through our familiar paragraph and find all the R sounds. The first one is marked for you. Check your answers with the answer key beginning on page 193. Exercise G. Three-word phrase story. The Three Little Pigs. Notice where there are patterns, where the words change, but the rhythm stays the same. Straw cutting tools, wood cutting tools, bricklaying tools. Read the story aloud. Once upon a time, there are three little pigs. They lived with their kind old mother near a large dark forest. One day, they decided to build their own houses. The first little pig used straw. He took his straw cutting tools, his new lawnmower, and built a little straw house. The second little pig used sticks. He took his wood cutting tools and some old paint brushes and built a small wooden house. The third little pig who was a very hard worker, used bricks. He took his bricklaying tools, an expensive mortar board, and built a large brick house. In the forest lived a big bad wolf. He wanted to eat the three little pigs, so he went to the flimsy straw abode and tried to blow it down. Not by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin, chin, cried the three little porkers. But the house was not very strong, and the big bad beast blew it down. The three little pigs ran to the rickety wooden structure, but the big bad wolf blew it down too. Quickly, the three little piggies ran to the sturdy brick dwelling and hid inside. The big bad wolf huffed and he puffed, but he couldn't blow the strong brick house down. The three little pigs laughed and danced and sang. Exercise H, Sentence Balance, Goldilocks. One of the most fascinating things about spoken English is how the intonation prepares the listener for what's coming. As you know, the main job of intonation is to announce new information. However, there's a secondary function, and that's to alert the listener of changes down the road. Certain shifts will be dictated for the sake of sentence balance. Set phrases and contrast don't change, but the intonation of a descriptive phrase will move from the second word to the first without changing the meaning. The stress change indicates that it's not the end of the sentence, but rather, there's more to come. This is why it's particularly important to speak in phrases instead of word by word. When we practiced Goldilocks and the Three Bears the first time on page 34, we had very short sentences, so we didn't need sentence balance. All of the underlying descriptive phrases would otherwise be stressed on the second word if the shift weren't needed. There's a little girl called Goldilocks. She's walking through a sunny forest and sees a small house. She knocks on the door, but no one answers. She goes inside to see what's there. There are three chairs in the large room. Goldilocks sits on the biggest chair. It's too high for her to sit on. She sits on the middle-sized one, but it's too low. She sits on the small chair, and it's just right. On the table, there are three bowls of porridge. She tries the first one, but it's too hot to swallow. The second one is too cold, and the third one is just right. So she eats it all. After that, she goes upstairs to look around. 
There are three beds in the bedroom. She sits down on the biggest one. It's too hard to sleep on. The middle-sized bed is too soft. The little one is just right. So she lies down and falls asleep. In the meantime, the family of three bears comes home. The papa bear, the mama bear, and the baby bear. They look around and say, Who's been sitting in our chairs and eating our porridge? Then they run upstairs and say, Who's been sleeping in our beds? Goldilocks wakes up when she hears all the noise and is so scared that she runs out of the house and never comes back. Four word phrases. Exercise I. Multiple modifiers with set phrases. When you continue to modify a set phrase, you maintain the original intonation pattern and simply add an additional stress point. One. It's a short fingernail. It's a really short fingernail. Two. It's a banana pancake. It's a tasty banana pancake. Three, it's a leaky hot tub. It's a leaky old hot tub. Four, it's a new hard drive. It's a brand new hard drive. Five, it's a long backbone. It's a long hard backbone. Six, it's a wrinkled playing card. It's a wrinkled old playing card. Seven, it's a bright spotlight. It's a bright white spotlight. Eight, it's the new phone book. It's a new age phone book. Exercise J, compound intonation of numbers. In short phrases, teen can be thought of as a separate word in terms of intonation. In longer phrases, the number plus teen becomes one word. Repeat after me. One. How old is he? He's 14. He's 40. Two. How long has it been? 14 years. 40 years. Three. How old is he? He's 14 years old. He's 40 years old. Exercise K. Modifying three-word set phrases. When you continue to modify a set phrase, you maintain the original intonation pattern and simply add an unstressed modifier. 1. It's a fingernail clipper. It's a new fingernail clipper. 2. It's a pancake shop. It's a good pancake shop. 3. He's a hot tub maker. He's the best hot tub maker. 4. It's a hard drive holder. It's a plastic hard drive holder. Five, it's a backbone massage. It's a painful backbone massage. Six, it's a playing card rack. It's my best playing card rack. Seven, it's a spotlight bulb. It's a fragile spotlight bulb. Eight, it's a phone book listing. It's an unusual phone book listing. Exercise L. Four-word phrase story. Little Red Riding Hood. Repeat after me. Once upon a time, there was a cute little redhead named Little Red Riding Hood. One day she told her mother that she wanted to take a well-stocked picnic basket to her dear old grandmother on the other side of the dark, scary black forest. Her mother warned her not to talk to strangers, especially the dangerous big bad wolf. Little Red Riding Hood said she'd be careful and left. Halfway there, she saw a mild-mannered hitchhiker. She pulled over in her bright red sports car and offered him a ride. Just before they got to the freeway turnoff for her old grandmother's house, the heavily bearded young man jumped out and ran away. Was he the wolf? He hurried ahead to the waiting grandmother's house, let himself in, ate her, and jumped into her bed, 
to wait for Little Red Riding Hood. When Little Red Riding Hood got to the house, she was surprised. Grandmother, what big eyes you have! The wolf replied, The better to see you with, my dear. But grandmother, what big ears you have! The better to hear you with, my dear. Oh, grandmother, what big teeth you have! The better to eat you with! And the wolf jumped out of the bed to eat Little Red Riding Hood. Fortunately for her, she was a recently paid-up member of the infamous National Rifle Association. So she pulled out a brand new shotgun and shot the wolf dead. Exercise M. Building up to five-word phrases. Repeat after me, then pause the CD and write your own phrases using the same order and form. 1. It's a pot. 2. It's new. 3. It's a new pot. 4. Brand new. 5. It's a brand new pot. 6. It's a teapot. 7. It's a new teapot. 8. It's a brand new teapot. 9. It's a teapot lid. 10. It's a new teapot lid. 11. It's a brand new teapot lid. Chapter 7. TH. I'd like you to consider words as rocks for a moment. When a rock first rolls into the ocean, it is sharp and well-defined. After tumbling about for a few millennia, it becomes round and smooth. A word goes through a similar process. When it first rolls into English, it may have a lot of sharp, well-defined vowels or consonants in it, but after rolling off of a few million tongues, it becomes round and smooth. This smoothing process occurs when a tense vowel becomes reduced and when an unvoiced consonant becomes voiced. The most common words are the smoothest, the most reduced, the most often voiced. There are several very common words that are all voiced. This, that, the, those, them, they, their, their, then, then, though. The strong words such as think, think, or thing, as well as long or unusual words such as thermometer or theologian, stay unvoiced. The sound of the TH combination seems to exist only in English, Greek, and Castilian Spanish. Just as with most of the other consonants, there are two types, voiced and unvoiced. The voiced TH is like a D, but instead of being in back of the teeth, it's a quarter inch lower and forward between the teeth. The unvoiced TH is like an S between the teeth. Most people tend to replace the unvoiced TH with S or T, and the voiced one with Z or D, so instead of thing, they say sing or ting, and instead of that, they say zat or dat. To pronounce TH correctly, Think of a snake's tongue. You don't want to take a big, relaxed tongue, throw it out of your mouth for a long distance, and leave it there for a long time. Make only a very quick, sharp little movement. Keep your tongue's tip very tense. It darts out between your teeth and snaps back very quickly. Thing. That. This. The tongue's position for the unvoiced TH is similar to that of S, but for TH, the tongue is extended through the teeth instead of hissing behind the back of the teeth. The voice TH is like a D, except that the tongue is placed between the teeth or even pressed behind the teeth. Now we're ready for some practice. Exercise 7-1, the throng of thermometers. I'm going to read the following paragraph once straight through so that you can hear that no matter how fast I read it, all the THs are still there. It's a distinctive sound, but when you repeat it, don't put too much effort into it. Listen to my reading. The throng of thermometers from the Thuringian thermometer folks arrived on Thursday. There were 1,033 thick thermometers, though, instead of 1,036 thin thermometers, which was three thermometers fewer than the 1,036 we were expecting, not to mention that they were thick ones rather than thin ones. We thoroughly thought that we had ordered 1,036, not 1,033 thermometers, and asked the Thuringian thermometer folks to reship the thermometers thin, not thick. They apologized for sending only 1,033 thermometers rather than 1,036, and promised to replace the thick thermometers thermometers within thermometers. Exercise 7-2, targeting the TH sound. 
In order to target the TH sound, first, hold a mirror in front of you and read our familiar paragraph silently, moving only your tongue. It should be visible in the mirror each time you come to a TH. Second, find all the THs, both voiced and unvoiced. Remember, a voice sound makes your throat vibrate, and you can feel that vibration by placing your fingers on your throat. There are ten voiced and two unvoiced THs here. You can mark them by underscoring the former and drawing a circle around the latter. Or, if you prefer, use two of your color markers. Pause the CD to mark the TH sounds. Don't forget to check your answers against the answer key beginning on page 193. Exercise 7-3, Tongue Twisters. Feeling confident? Good. Try the following tongue twisters and have some fun. 1. The sixth sick sheiks, sixth thick sheep. 2. This is a zither. Is this a zither? 3. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought. If the thought I thought I thought had been the thought I thought, I wouldn't have thought so much. Chapter 8. More Reduced Sounds There are two sounds that look similar, but sound quite different. One is the tense vowel, pronounced oo, and the other is the soft vowel, u, uh, whose pronunciation is a combination of i and a. Uh. The oo sound is located far forward in the mouth and requires you to round your lips. The u uh is one of the four reduced vowel sounds that are made in the throat. The most tense and highest in the throat is e. Eh. Next, slightly more relaxed is i, then u, uh, and the deepest and most relaxed is the neutral schwa, u. Uh. For the reduced semivowel schwa plus r, the throat is relaxed, but the tongue is tense. Exercise 8-1. Comparing u and u. Uh. Look at the chart that follows and repeat each word. We're contrasting the sound u, a strong, non-reducible sound, Ooh, that is made far forward in the mouth, with the lips fully rounded, with the reduced uh sound in the second and fourth columns. 1. Booed. Book. 2. Boo. Bushel. 3. Cooed. Could. 4. Cool. Cushion. 5. Food. Foot. 6. Fool. Full. 7. Good. Good. 8. Hood. Hood. 9. Cook. Cook. 10. Crew. Crook. 11. Luke. Look. 12. Nuke. Nook. 13. Pool. Pull. 14. Pooch. Put. 15. Shoe. Sugar. 16. Suit. Sit. 17. Shoot. Should. 18. Stewed. Stood. 19. Toucan. Took. 20. Wooed. Wood. Exercise 8-2. Lax Vowels. The lax vowels are produced in the throat and are actually quite similar to each other. Let's practice some lax vowels. See also chapter 11 to contrast with tense vowels. Remember to double the vowel when the word ends in a voice consonant. One, end, it, un, earn, two, bet, bit, book, but, burn, three, kept, kid, could, cut, Kurt, four, check, chick, chuck, church, five, debt, did, does, dirt, six, fence, fit, foot, fun, first, seven, fell, fill, full, furl, eight, get, guilt, good, gut, girl, nine, help, Hit, hook, hut, hurt, ten, held, hill, hood, hull, hurl, eleven, gel, jill, jump, jerk, twelve, ked, kid, cook, cud, curd, thirteen, 
crest, crypt, crook, crumb. 14. Let, little, look, lump, lurk. 15. Men, milk, muck, murmur. 16. Net, knit, nook, nut, nerd. 17. Pet, pit, put, put, pert. 18. Pell, pill, pull, pearl. 19. Red, rid, root, rut, rural. 20. Said, sit, soot, such, search. 21. Shed, shin, should, shut, sure. 22. Sled, slim, slug, slur. 23. Stead, still, stood, stuff, stir. 24. It stewed, it stick, it stood, it's done, it's dirt. 25. Stretch, string, struck. 26. Tell, tip, took, ton, turn. 27. Then, this, Thus. 28. Thing. Thug. Third. 29. Vex. Vim. Vug. Verb. Exercise 8.3. Bit or beat. We've discussed intonation in terms of new information, contrast, opinion, and negatives. As you heard on page 3, Americans tend to stretch out certain one-syllable words. But which ones? The answer is simple. When a single syllable word ends in an unvoiced consonant, the vowel is on a single stair step, short and sharp. When the word ends in a voiced consonant or a vowel, the vowel is on a double stair step. You can also think of this in terms of musical notes. Here you're going to compare the four words bit, bid, beat, and bead. Once you can distinguish these four, all the rest are easy. Repeat bit, bid, Beat, bead. Exercise 8-4. Bit or beat? Bid or bead? Read each column down. Next, contrast the single and double tense vowels with each other and the single and double lax vowels with each other. Finally, read all four across. Tense vowels. Beat, seat, heat, peat, feet, niece, geese. Deep, neat, leaf, bead, seed, heed, impede, feed, knees, he's, deed, need, leave. Lax vowels, bit, sit, hit, pit, fit, miss, hiss, disc, knit. Lift, bid, sid, hid, rapid, fin, miz, his, did, nid, live. Wake up, make my body go. Make our bodies high.